Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good evening to you on the East Coast. It's not evening. Five Five o'clock isn't evening. Yeah, well, what is it? It's not afternoon. It is. It's late afternoon. No, it's early evening. I don't know, guys. What do you guys think? What's happening, everybody? Uh, It is Sunday. This is our regular Sunday live haul. Um, Mm -hmm. Last one before we are going to be gone for uh, definitely the next two, because we will be on a cruise. Yeah. Uh We're going to be gone. We will be gone. We're doing stuff. We're doing stuff. It's true. I mean, we're kind of always doing stuff. That's true. That's true. Where our lives are not boring. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. No, they're they're not. Like, my life isn't boring. They're I'm not boring. Katie's I'm is. just thinking, like, I'm so tired today because, like, we've been going nonstop this last week, but not really necessarily any fun stuff. We took down all of the Christmas decor. Which somehow you, I think because we have, where are you going? I was going to show that there's no more Christmas oh, okay. behind us. All of the Christmas decor is down. Uh, and we yeah. had accumulated even more because we're in a new house, bigger space. And so you had gotten a bunch of new stuff. Plus, like when all the discounts happened after Christmas, you accumulated some more stuff. Listen, and don't we, judge me. <laughs> and before we uh, decorated this year for Christmas, we had moved storage units because we moved across town. And we like downsized to half the size. Now we have like a five by 10. Mm-hmm. And even though we've been together for over five years and I've always been able to get stuff to fit in the spaces, you still didn't believe me when I said I could make it all fit. And guess what, guys? I got it all to fit. It's stacked pretty high. I mean, it's, I mean, it's stacked. I like, got stacked up like eight feet. Cause... Eight or nine feet tall. Because <laughs> what's the deal with storage units, by the way? All this vertical space that who the frig can use it unless you have super high ladders and shelving. Yeah, it's kind of, it's definitely a racket because, but if you can get some stacked high, we got some new bins, uh, just did some serious Tetris and got everything stacked up in there. And now our storage unit is entirely Christmas and fall decor. Like that's all that we have stored. And I have room for more, it's which means that all more. of the holidays that I continue to decorate, actually, I don't decorate for any other holiday. I do I'm our, tree. I do the tree and that's about it. The tree and the mantle in the living room. And I actually have um, some pretty heavy duty Valentine's decor that I put up this year, but that's really because we're hosting a wedding reception for friends tomorrow night Yeah, here at our house. So um, I wanted it to look a little extra special because we have like 40 people coming over for their, for their wedding reception. I know like five, I know the people that are getting married and their family and that's yeah. it. But you did get that little holiday tree this last year. And so now you do have like, the decor that changes with each hall. It's ridiculous, you guys. It's ridiculous. It makes me happy. I think okay. we need to get like a little shed in the back because basically now I'm spending over $1,000 a year just to store our holiday crap. Well, you know, <laughs> $1,000 a year is a small price for a happy wife, happy life. Oh, yes. So we <laughs> we did lots of moving stuff around, but we are uh, we're leaving on Thursday morning. We're going to, to New Orleans mm-hmm. um, for three days. Mm-hmm. So we'll be there. We'll get there on the second. We'll be there for three days. We get to. So we're going for our friend Corey's. A lot of you guys know who Corey is. Corey's in the chat. Uh, we're going there for her 50th birthday. I was basically tricked into going on a cruise because I've never really been interested in going on cruises. But I was tricked by being asked in 2020. And I'm like, 2023? Sure. Why not? And now here we are. And oh, my God, I'm going on a cruise. Actually, I think it's going to be fun, uh, but we're going to, it, it leaves out of New Orleans. So we're going to go there three days early and um, spend some time in New Orleans. And we get to hang out with um, Chris Bradley, our friend Chris Bradley, which those mm-hmm. of you who go to the remix or eBay open would know Chris. So that's going to be really fun. And then on the 5th, I think is when um, our cruise takes off. Mm-hmm. We're at sea for like three days. And then we go, we get to spend a day in Jamaica and then the next day we'll be in uh, Grand Cayman. Mm-hmm. And then the day after that, we will be at uh, Cozumel. Cozumel. And then and then just back home or back mm-hmm. to New Orleans. Uh, so it should be fun. It's supposed to be pretty cold in, in um, New Orleans. But uh, but it'll be nice everywhere else. Yep. So I'm excited. I'm, ex- I'm excited to spend some time with Chris because we only see her at eBay events or at our remix. So we've never really been able to hang out with her for an extended period of time because mm-hmm. it's usually in like around, you know, anywhere from 400 to 3000 people. So that would be nice to spend some uh, nice one on one time with her. And uh, she's agreed to be our little tour guide in New Orleans and take us to see some of the really cool stuff that 
you know, Katie and I are interested in that we've never seen before. Like a spooky cemetery, but not yeah. like the one that most people go to, like one that she says is really scary. And the last people she took, they couldn't hack it. Yep. So I'm hoping it's going to be real spooky. I'm excited about that. And yes, Tommy, of course you get to go. That's the whole point of going on a cruise is that you dock for the day. Mm -hmm. um, they usually dock overnight. You wake up in the morning and you're at, you're docked at the, at the destination. And then you get off the boat all day long and you get to go swimming and, and, you know, shopping and touristing in the ports and are in and around the ports for the whole day. And then you go back to the, uh, the boat yeah. for nighttime. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've been on several cruises. Katie has never been on a cruise. Um, this is carnival cruise, which is nice. It's, it's like the economy cruise line. And I don't say that to be, to, to neg it. I just mean to say you get a lot of destinations, um, for your budget with carnival. So it's, it's all about, you get to go and do a lot of things for fairly low money when it comes to cruises. There are lots of different, I've been on, on carnival and I've been on um, Royal Caribbean and I've been on MSC. MSC is is a luxury cruise line, and that's like once you've been on one of those, and I've been on two, it's it gets to be it, everything's a step down. Swarovski Swarovski crystal uh, spiral staircases. Well, as Amanda and Brad are on one. Right I know, now. I know. I was commenting on their on their mm -hmm. posts. So yeah, I'm um, I'm excited. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We get to hang out with Corey, obviously, and her family and friends. A lot of people that we don't know, uh, but also our friend Susan. Um, is coming with her husband and our friends, yeah, Debbie, and, Debbie and Max. Um, yeah, we've never really got to spend uh, real time with Debbie and, and Max. We haven't met. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be nice to see some of these people that like, you know, we've never really gotten to have like real quality time with. Plus for us, it's like, I don't know the last time we've actually traveled where we never have to, as, as where, a couple ever. We'll just listen. Let me finish my sentence, woman. <gasps> No, the, the first time we've gotten to like really travel where we're not working, so we're not going to be sourcing mm -hmm. and we're not going to like visit friends and family like this is like us actually going like on a vacation mm -hmm. and we are going to have um, we paid for like the Internet package or whatever. So we are going to have like some limited access to like do just basic maintenance stuff, but we're not going to be working at all. Not going to be and, working. Um, and just getting. To, I actually like, got the Internet from more in case Dana needs to get in touch with us because Dana's house sitting and puppy sitting. And in case something God forbid goes wrong at the yeah. house or with the dogs, but but also like not having to drive anywhere, not mm -hmm. having it's like basically we just get to go. Mm -hmm. I'm actually looking forward to those those first three days just on the cruise where it's like we're not going anywhere, we're not doing anything, we're just hanging out, and we're just like I think there'll be a lot of indulging in adult beverages and hanging out in the sun and a lot of laughing. And, you know, we're going to be with a bunch of middle-aged women, us included. So there will probably be some peeing of the pants happening. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're bringing but... me to keep, keep things young. So <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm really excited. We've never been on a, a, on a trip together that has not been work-related or visiting family. And when we go, either one of us go home to visit family, it's usually like we're run ragged trying yeah. to visit with everyone. So this is going to be nice. Yep. And a lot of times where we bring work with us or, you know, or like I said, it's like, we got to rent a car, we got to drive around. It's just, there's something about like, you're not responsible for anything that's going to be nice. And like, as far as on the cruise ship goes, it's like, we don't have to really think about like food or no, it's, it's nice. like, you just, you're like, I'm hungry. I'm going to go hit the buffet or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, oh, I'm thirsty. Let's, and you, and you don't have to like tip cause it's all included. Like you, you pay like your, everything is included in the price, including tipping. Mm-hmm. So, and you don't have to like carry around cash on the cruise. It's like, basically you just have like your card, right? And yeah. They, you just charge the drinks to your room. Right. And so it's like, it just, it, I'm looking forward to that, to like, just kind of turning my brain off a little bit. Maybe I'll download a bunch Cara, of- Cara, we're sad you didn't book this stuff. cruise too. Listen, I, you know, you and Mike would have had a lot of fun with us. Yeah, for sure. And we, we booked it in 2020. So it was like- um, or towards the end of 2020. It so, was pandemic cruise rates. Yeah. So it was, it's, it was pretty ridiculously cheap and, uh, and it's been paid for for years now. So it's kind of exciting. The only yeah. thing we're paying for is the hotel, <laughs> except she paid up for like the hotel in New Orleans. We're staying at like a really cool, um, old hotel, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like $400 a night. Yeah. Yeah. So now, so basically I was informed that I was responsible for paying for everything else on her trip. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, no, no, not open bar. You can buy um, drink packages if you're a cruiser, but I have to tell you, you'd have to spend every day on the boat drinking yourself blind for them to make sense monetarily. Usually, 
I used to be able to split drink packages or in some cruises I've been on. Um, that's not really a thing anymore. Um, it, they're, they're pretty pricey. You have to be a big drinker. So here, so the, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but here's the thing. It's, it was $60 per person per day, I believe is what the drink package was. Mm -hmm. So that would be between the two of us, that would be $120 per day, seven days in a row. So the idea to me, it's like, okay, maybe, I will never drink maybe, that much. Maybe we'll have a day where maybe we approach that amount. Maybe I doubt, but I mean, who knows what's like the foofy drinks you want to get. And, you know, the, when we're on the ship the entire day, maybe let's say we even go over the likelihood that we would hit a $120 worth of drinks every single day. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So it's just the better. likelihood is slim to none. Right. In our case. So at first I was like, oh, that makes sense. I'm going to totally do that. But then I was like, oh, but for both of us, like that just doesn't make any sense. Like I'd rather, I mean, yeah. It'd be and it's usually if you, someone in the, in the, in your room gets the drink package, everyone over 21 is, has to get it. Like I could, I had to get, both of us had to get the full internet package. I couldn't get it for just one person. Yeah. Stupid. Anyway. Dirty, rotten. That's how they get you. All the, yeah. all the add-ons. It's true. But no, I think it'll, I think it'll be just fine. Um, I think Katie's going to enjoy herself more than she thought she would. No, I just, to me, like, I would rather go places. I don't know. The cruise thing has never really appealed to me. I'm embracing it. I think I'm going to have fun. I'm not, I'm not going to go on all bah humbug and be like, I don't, I don't like this. I'm not going to have fun. No, I'm going to have a great time. And I'm looking forward to hanging out with everybody. And I'm looking forward to like having some chill, quiet time too. Like I was saying, I'm going to download a bunch of podcasts. And I mean, we're going to have a lot of time, especially those days when we, when we're on our way to our first destination um, mm -hmm. so, and hopefully some pool lounging. Yeah. And then Corey, that's right. Corey says, don't forget, you can bring a bottle of wine or champagne each. We can, Ooh, well, um, we should do that. I'm not going to pack it. We can grab some when we're in new Orleans, I guess. And, um, basically you can bring it and then they, you have to hand it over to them and then they uncork it for you at dinner. Interesting. So yeah, we can do that. We should I will totally definitely. do that. Go get some three buck check. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, <laughs> or five buck champagne. No, but I will bring, I will bring my Prosecco. There you go. Uh, all right. That'll be, that'll be a plan in New Orleans. We'll, we'll grab some in New Orleans. Cause yeah, I forgot about that. They just tag it. You, you give it to them when you check in, they take it from your bags and then they can, they bring it to you and they, you can, they uncork it at the table. You can have it for one of your dinner nights or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I've always wanted to do an Alaskan cruise. That's the one cruise that does appeal to me. That is the Alaskan cruise, but anywho, all right. Just making some plans <laughs> live on the show. Anyway, we got everything taken down. I did want to say one thing before we get into the show. Uh, so we have this, we, we have higher ceilings here. So we got, ended up getting like on clearance, what would we get like a nine foot Christmas tree? Mm -hmm. So our old one was a seven foot one, uh, our old main tree. Cause I mean, this one over here has got like 20 trees, but um, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, the old one, how long did you have that? 25 years, 25 years, but, uh, it's art of, you know, art, artificial tree, obviously. So I put it up on Facebook marketplace for free. And There's nothing wrong with it. Here's yeah. It still works great. Um, but it's, it's funny. There? Yeah. It's still there because I don't know if you guys, I've talked about this before. When you put something on Facebook marketplace, you immediately start getting 5,000 messages. Is, is this still available? Is this still available? Is this still available? So I figured out when I do free stuff like this, it's, I literally have it on the curb outside. And then I put in the description that I will not be answering any questions or messages and that the ad will stay live as long as it's still available. Because I'm like, seriously, you will get 500 people and then people will ask you to hold it for them. And it's like, it's so, free for frig's sake. So, so no, I'm, you so either I'm, come pick it up or you don't. So I'm watching on my, um, on our, our camera out front so I can see, you can see it's like you that little box, it, that little box right there. Cause I want to make sure if somebody picks it up, like during the show, I want to make sure I delete it. So Katie's on her phone during the show. Just no, so I'm you just know. going to be looking at it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to look at mm -hmm. it. I'm not going to be engaging and mm -hmm. answering messages and checking Facebook posts. Yep. Sure. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Rude. Rude. Anyway, do you want to get into the show? Yeah. So today's show, uh, like I said, it's our regular Sunday live haul. We break it up into three parts. The first part, we look at our numbers for the last week, all of our gross sales across all of our platforms. We look at the cost, particularly cost of goods. Middle part of the show, we look at our sales highlights for the last week, some of the cool stuff that we sold or educational or whatnot. And in the last part, we do a haul. I literally have no haul this week because I have not, I haven't sourced in weeks, guys. It's kind of been a little bit liberating. I'm going to have to do a ma like a major sourcing by when I get back, but um, I've just decided I'm waiting until I get back, man. 
So we're just going to be, you've got your box knife. Where's your box knife? You got your box knife? I got it. What'd you do? Where'd you put it? She's got her box knife. Vicky is going to uh, cut open one of these. One I'm going to cut myself out of some, she's gonna, some Spanx. So she's going to cut herself out of her Spanx and she's going to cut herself into one or two of these boxes from Colorado. Oh, Jen um, thinks she's funny. Jen's got jokes in the chat. Is it still available? <laughs> Listen, how, Jen. How dare you? <laughs> anyway, so we're just going to look at your whole haul today and see what, right. what you got going on. Uh, but first, let me bring up our numbers and do 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 boop boppy. Look at my first do 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 boppy boo. And here we go. All right. So over this last week, only 21 orders on eBay, uh, four on Etsy, nothing Instagram, private orders, and then five between Grilled and Mercari for a total of 30 outgoing orders. Meh eBay gross sales. I mean, I think it's pretty sad that now I'm just happy if I at least make you it over. You did have a private order, didn't you? That was the week before. Oh. Now, I, I'm, sadly, it's it's pretty exciting to me when I break a thousand on eBay for the week. Like, I feel like at least I'm not like that low on my eBay sales. So whatever. But $1,225.36. Etsy. It's because all your t-shirt bros are not on eBay. I really think that's what it is. And the other platforms well, are so, so much smaller. I think it's just eBay in general. I mean, let's wait till we get to your numbers before you start chitty chat with what you're oh, saying. Oh, no, my numbers are terrible. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Etsy, 28506 uh, Grilled Mercari, 294 for a total of $1,804.42. Shipping, $179.87. You can see the rest of the fees broken down there. And cost of goods, $270. So my net total sales, $1,143.38. And you can see gross ASP, $60.15. My goal is like 70, but I've been sending out some pretty low offers. Um, so didn't hit that. This Trying week. to stir up some sales. Yep. And then before my, we go on vacation net. and the sales go down. Yeah. To zero. Cause it's like, we're going to be gone for 10 days. We're not going to be working. I mean, I'm going to, I'm not going to do time away. I'm going to extend my, um, my handling. Cause for me, that just works better, but uh, still the sales are definitely going to drop and that makes me nervous in general. And it's like February is a short month. So yeah, it's going to be pretty scary. I'm not going to lie. Here's the thing. Um, we're going to have to, that's the thing about being a reseller, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have to take significant time away, or if you go away, or if you have to shut your stores down, because I don't know, you have mm -hmm. surgery or whatever it might be, you're not exactly accumulating PTO, mm -hmm. right? You're not getting vacation time. So for me, I have to completely shut mm -hmm. down three of my stores, I can, I'll keep open eBay and Etsy and just extend the handling time mm -hmm. on those two, but the other stores have to be shut down because they don't have that. So yeah, here we go. That's, uh, that's what it's going to be like. So 10 days without any work and with, um, uh, minimal income coming in means that February is going to be a painful month. Yeah. So it'll be fine though, but, um, all right, next up, let's look at your numbers. Yeah. Um, this is almost exact for the last three weeks in a row. I feel like, uh, 31 on eBay, 10 on Etsy, 16 on Posh. Posh actually woke the heck up this week. Mm -hmm. um, one on Macari and one was actually Thrilling. I did get a sale from Thrilling Studio Services, which still exists. Their website does not exist for um, the general public to purchase, but they still send emails. If you are a Thrilling person that had an account with them and had a store on their website, they send requests from certain studios um, and uh, that they're looking for certain things and you can send pictures and information back, which I did and have done a few times. And I actually sold something. Um, so that was nice. So, you know, it, and I don't think, believe they even took fees out of it. I'm not even sure. Um, anyway, they just sent me the money and I shipped it out. So 59 total outgoing orders, 1661, we'll say on eBay. Meh, terrible. Um, 611 and change on Etsy, 968 on Posh. That's a great week on Posh. Mm -hmm. Uh, 160 between Macari and Thrilling for a total of 3,400 for the week. Again, 3,400 for the week. I'm happy with that. So 3,400 is, is cool. I'm cool with that. Um, 276 for shipping. And then you'll see my cost of goods, 263, which is actually a little bit high for me because I had two items in there that were um, relatively high. So my total net is just under $2,400 for the week. I'm cool with that too. All right. I saw somebody walking towards the box, but they were just walking by. Mm. We'll see if we can get it picked up. During so the yes, show, as, I, as I said, Tommy, Thrilling did close. 
but they still do, uh, but, studio, but they service. still do studio services, which means they send out emails to people that had stores with them and request certain items that with photos that fit a certain aesthetic. And then you can reply or not. And I do reply to them if I have that item, those items in my inventory. Mm -hmm. um, it takes some time. I send them the photos, the measurements, the description, the title and my price. And this is the first time I've had them buy one from me. So yeah. So, uh, so Tommy was asking about Grailed having time away. I, I don't think they do, but here's the thing about Grailed. You get seven days to ship something if it sells. So for me, we're going to be gone for 10 days. I don't sell daily on Grailed at all. I, I often go days without a sale on there. So I'm just going to basically... You're going to wing it. I'm going to wing it. I'm going to risk it. And uh, most likely it won't be an issue if someone does happen to buy something and it's going to take longer than seven days, I'll just message them and tell them what the deal is. And if they want to cancel, they can cancel. And if not, I'll ship it late. It's, it is what it is. I'm not too worried about it. So I do see a question in the chat from somebody I've never seen the name before. So, um, Lily little potato, what do you tend to get and sell? Um, these are the shows where you would watch our, sh our show. And this is what we talk about every week, what we tend to get and what we sell. Exactly. Well, we're going to show our sales, and we're gonna highlights, show our sales highlights for the last week. And we're going to show a haul later on too. Right. So is there anything else you had to say about your numbers? No, I, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, that's pretty close to, like I said, I like to net 2,500 a week. So I'm pretty excited with that. Yeah. Um, I think Michelle's going to appreciate your first sale. You're going to show here. I know this is the second one that I have sold recently. Um, listen, pick up those clown costumes. Uh, Michelle, uh, Naranjo, no, I, I'm going to ruin your last name. Sorry. Naranjo. Naranjo. I don't know. I'm sorry. Naranjo? I'm sorry, Michelle. I, I suck. <laughs> um, I, I, it's not intentional. I apologize. Um, but anyway, I picked this up at the bins. I paid about, I don't know, super light. So I paid about three bucks for it. Maybe, uh, it was listed for less than two weeks. And yes, I put clown core in the title uh, and it sold for 97 and change. It was on sale and plus shipping. So I'm super excited about nice. it. We were wrong all the way around. It's Naranjo. Okay. I mean, I'm assuming, or is it Naranjo? Or is it Naranjo? <laughs> I'm going to punch, I'm going to punch her, Michelle. Anyway, yeah. sorry, Michelle. I apologize. Um, I will get it. I will endeavor to get it correct. There you go. Next time. So yeah, uh, clown core. This is the second one I've sold. One was for over a hundred dollars. This one is just about a hundred dollars. Do not sleep on these vintage handmade clown costumes. They were all the rage in the fifties, sixties, seventies, and early eighties. You're going to find them ev from everywhere. This particular one, I don't believe I dated. I think this one's probably closest to like the eighties. It's not, it wasn't one of the really old ones based on fabric. Um, but I think this one's probably eighties. It was, was really bright though. It's a fun one. Very nice. All right. First up for me is the Ski Park City sweatshirt. You guys know how I feel about my skiing stuff. Uh, this one is dead stock, um, new with tags. Really nice and super soft on the inside. I love it. I love it. The gear for sports. And uh, it did not sell for the price you see there. I sent out an offer for $65 and it was accepted. But, um, you know, this isn't like an overly exciting. Um, there's no cool graphic of a dude skiing on the front of it, but still a nice little ski sweatshirt. And I probably paid about $15 for it, I believe. I haven't had it too long. Um, flipped it for $65. So not terrible. And I will continue my hunt for all cool things skiing. All right. Next up. What you got? <clears throat> Don't sleep on the linens. Here I go again. So um, vintage mohair lap blankets. These are kind of a thing when you find them, grab them. Uh, go up a little close to the to the closer up shot so you can see the mohair. That's what mohair looks like. It's going to say it on the label in some cases, some cases not. You just need to learn what it feels like, but it's a thing. So um, wool, it's wool and it's just a fuzzy wool. It's something that um, don't ever try to wash them, by the way. So linens are excellent. Um, usually you're going to find them, you know, the mohair lap blankets are almost always going to be plaid. They're almost always going to have been made in Scotland or somewhere uh, like that. I found some, you know, made in the UK in general. Like, so I'd maybe paid two to three dollars for it. They're not very big. It's smaller than say a twin size blanket is definitely a throw and they're very lightweight. Mohair is very, very light. It's kind of scratchy. Got to be honest with you. I probably would not want to wrap up in that blanket, yeah. but that one had a really nice plaid um, colorway. So I've had it, I don't know, five, six months, maybe 
And I paid $3 or $4 for it. It sold for the price you see there, which is $97.46. Very nice. Very nice. Good work. All right. Next up for me, I'm continuing to sell some records. Uh, this one, I got an offer for $75, which um, I was totally, what does it say? Sold for $83.99. Did I sell for $83? I don't know. Anyway, $75 I thought was what I sold it for. Um, and I paid like 15, 20 bucks for it. It's just an, a 10 inch EP, uh, AFI, the punk band, um, and great album by the way. But yeah, I've been selling all off some, hollows, EP, all hollows EP. Got it. Yeah. They're like a horror, you know, kind of, in the I know who of AFI like is and stuff, but anyway, um, all of them, I love this album, but I don't need it if I can sell it for, for 75 bucks or three, four times what I paid for it. So I was happy to let it go. Next up, this was a bins find. Um, it's it, it is heavy. It's a patchwork. It's actually not faux fur, which I didn't realize until after I had um, sold it. Um, it's real fur. It's probably a because um, it says genuine leather, so it's it, which means it's real fur under. It's probably just a sheared beaver or um, bear or something like that. It's definitely not mink or anything, and it doesn't really feel real. But uh, Penny Lane, everybody knows, almost famous. It's kind of that that type of look. It's not entirely, but close enough. And when I listed this, this was closer to um, Halloween time. So Penny Lane is a, is a big uh, Halloween costume type of thing. So uh, it sold. Uh, this was from the bins. It's kind of heavy, so it probably cost me four or five bucks. And again, sold for the price you see there, ninety seven forty six. I know that's a weird price. It's just I price everything at 0.95. And then when my stuff goes on sale, it kind of gives it weird mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Penny Lane, Kate Hudson played her and uh, in the movie, and mm -hmm. she's my birthday twin. Almost Famous is one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up. Man, I've had these forever. These uh, Air Force coveralls. I've had these for so long. I've been wanting to sell them. I think I've sent out some pretty low offers. And somebody sent me an offer for $90. And I was like, heck yeah, get these out of my life. And they're heavy. And they they're, take up a lot of space. They're heavy. They're big. It's like they're almost taking up like half of a bin. It's like, come on, let's get these out of here. So I'm excited that I sold it. But man. I think you got those from the clothing vault. Mm, I don't think so. I didn't. No, I already had these. Um, anyway. Sold them for 90 bucks. I probably paid like maybe 10 bucks for them. I did say beaver. I did say sheared beaver. You guys yeah. are out of control already. <laughs> uh, anyway, I just wanted to show these because it always feels good when you make some decent money on something you've had forever that you just want to get rid of. So mm -hmm. that you just get sick of. Yeah. Get out of here. Um, this is another bins find. Um, this was a bins find here locally again. So I paid three to four dollars based on the weight. It's um, probably just under two pounds. It is a um, Bogner, which is a good ski brand. Ski jackets are flying out of my closets the last few weeks on um, every platform. Just so you know, ski jackets are big. Um, this is the time of the year. Everybody's skiing. And then we've got spring break is happening. So this one was a little bit dated. It's not vintage, but I feel like it's a little dated in the pattern design. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, but it sold for the price that you see there. I don't think I had it listed two weeks, maybe two weeks. Sold for one thirty one twenty one. Nice. Very nice. All right. Next up, you guys know that I went through all my inventory and found a bunch of stuff that was unlisted. And this jacket was one of them, uh, Banana Republic Safari Travel Jacket. Uh, I did not sell it for what you see there, but I think I sent an offer out for one twenty five, and that's what it sold for. I remember we talked a few weeks ago about the old Banana Republic stuff, and that's mm -hmm. the old tag there. Um, but it's just a really nice jacket. It has some, it has some marks on it, but nothing crazy. And uh, I sold it for one twenty five, so I was really happy about that because who knows what I even paid for it? I got it forever ago, so I wasn't paying up as much then. I wouldn't have paid more than probably like ten bucks for it. Um, but uh, one twenty five, I was very happy. I've, I've sold like quite a few items now since I've relisted them. I know. Well, uh, imagine so that it's, I, it sells. Like I it's know it's great. It's I have this great inventory. It's awesome. Uh, so this I actually got in Colorado on my first sourcing trip. I Love bought it. this out of Smash Mouth is Mouth's uh, garage. Like, I don't know what it is. I can't remember. I keep calling him Smash Mouth. An asshole. 
<laughs> doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, it's not like he's watching. Um, he but he had some great stuff, Alex. Uh, so this, I think I paid $20 for this. I Mishmash paid... Vintage, that's his name. Oh, Mishmash, that's it. Smash Mouth, Mishmash, Same thing. Close. <laughs> Uh, so this one has been listed for maybe a couple of months. I bought it the end of October. It takes a while to get listed. So six to eight weeks it was listed for. Uh, I did pay up for this. Like I said, I paid about 20 or $25. It sold for $146.96, uh, plus shipping. And there you go. Love it. I love it. It's a nice sweater. I think it's awesome. All right, next up. So this is a really cool shirt. I did not sell it for the price you see there. I'll tell you why I priced it high though. So I got this from yesterday's fits and I paid at most like 10 bucks for it. And I don't know if this was something that like, if Jesse looked this up at all or anything like that, I just got it. Cause I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. It's like some sort of rock thing. And it's for, it's a, a pro choice uh, concert thing, but I didn't really know a whole lot about it. And so then when I went and looked up, I saw that there were some that have sold for crazy amounts of money. So this was in the nineties. It was started by, I think Nirvana was at the first one. This was like 92, 93. Um, but it was like a lot of like the riot girls, like L seven and some of those bands uh, started this in the early nineties. And some of the stuff that's, that's specifically from the very first year goes for crazy, crazy numbers. Uh, but there's shirts that have like just this, this is like on the front, it's a little tiny logo. But there's some shirts where it's like a big version of this logo that go for hundreds of dollars, like high hundreds. Um, I couldn't find this exact one, um, but based on the tag, like it's definitely from like the early 90s. Um, but I couldn't find like this exact design. And so uh, so I just priced it really high and I had some interest. And then I sent out offers and sometimes on something like this where it's like, OK, I paid 10 bucks for it. I'm going to give like I'm going to throw out some really good discounts. And so I sent an offer out for 125 and it sold for 125. So this is just like a random t-shirt. Did you really have this listed for 427.99? Well, everything's on sale for 30% off. So yeah, I listed it that so it would be 300 on sale because it goes yeah. into sale. Um anyway, so it sold for 125 though. So That's a good sale. There you go. I wouldn't I, I probably would have picked it up, but I don't think I would have priced it that high. Well, wouldn't you have like looked up to see what what it's from? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, something like this, you want to look it up. I don't really gonna... comp anything. Okay, there's some things I comp and some things I don't. But if it's something like this that's an event, I'm going to like look it up and find out what the heck is it because I want to know like who put it on, what does it have to do with. And it's good to do that because otherwise I wouldn't have priced it high enough to make $125 off of a $10 t-shirt. Liz so... and Tommy in the chat right now. Tommy's like, I bet you giggled. He's like, I gagged a bit. I'm like, Tommy, who are you kidding? You don't have a gag reflex. Inappropriate. All right. Next All right. Here. Vintage. This I actually posted in the boss group. If anyone saw it, um, I actually paid about $5 for this at the bins based on weight. And uh, it sold for uh, the price you see there, $63.96. It wasn't exactly that it was a huge bolo um, because it wasn't in super great condition. Uh, it had a lot of pilling on it. However, you know, I love vintage bedding, but I got the best letter from a customer about this. It was really, really sweet. Um, were they Italian? Yeah, they were she Italian. She was just saying, the, the best letter. The best letter. The best letter. Uh, no, they were very sweet that this is a blanket that she had had since she was a little girl. It was her grandmother's, then it was a mother's, then it was hers. And she carried it around and what it was and used it until it was like the tiniest little sliver of a blanket and mm -hmm. then ended up losing it in a move. And so I thought it was really sweet. Um, Very so uh, she had sent me a really nice message about it. And then she left me a nice uh, feedback on it too. So that's the feedback right there. Oh, there you go. Uh, so I was very happy to have, this is what I love about selling vintage items, whether it's vintage clothing or vintage tchotchkes, whatever it may be, everything vintage not only is made better than anything that is made these days for the most part, but it evokes memories. Well, we um, have we have on our bed, so we have like our regular, you got your sheets and you've got your like main, like the big duvet comforter, comforter or whatever. But in between that, we have this comforter that is so ratty guys it looks mm -hmm. like maybe vicky might have been living on the streets with it it's this light it's white and light pink striped mm -hmm. and it's got like um probably polyester fill in it mm -hmm. or whatever it is so ripped up 
The and it has been washed a coming, million times. Stuffing is coming out. It's discolored. Because it's so old. Yeah. Because so it's just, it's so ratty, but we use it on our bed because it's for Vicky. It's like very special. I have a blankie too, right? Yeah. I, 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 you know, I've had it since I was We're 10, trying to find another one. 10 years old. I cannot find another one. I actually have an alert set on yeah. eBay and I check probably once a month. Well, the problem is I don't know who make, made it. The yeah. tags are gone. And a lot of it has to do more with the feel of it. Yeah, it's a hundred percent cotton, is what it is. It's a, yeah. so they don't have a, a lot of hundred percent cotton comforters or blankets anymore. So um, they usually some kind of um, mix. So how much yeah. if if you could find the exact same one, how much would you be willing to pay for? I'd it? pay three hundred dollars for one. Yeah, see if she found it, and it's not even anything like it's not. It was it's, probably it's canon. Striped. It's striped, you guys. It was probably canon. It was probably like that made by like Canon or one of those brands. I'm sure mm -hmm. it came from Kmart. Like my parents were cheap. I did not have, um, yes, it's a whoopee for those who know, no, it's right. Um, but I've had it on my bed since I was 10 years old and, um, I would replace it if I could. I just oh. can't. I had a down comforter that was so awesome. It was purple. It was just solid purple and it was filled with down like feathers, whatever. And that thing was like the most comfortable, cozy, awesome thing. Every once in a while you get poked in the face by a feather, but it was worth mm -hmm. it. It was worth it. Um, all right. Next up, another record. I sold this from Dust Till Dawn soundtrack. I think I showed it last week in my little pile of stuff of records I showed you guys. I sold it for the price you see there, one thirty nine ninety nine. I paid thirty dollars for it a few years ago, and sold it for one hundred and forty dollars. So, guys, I got. So you never know what kind of money you got just sitting around your house, just sitting around waiting to to be cashed in. All right. Nothing really more to say about that. No, it's a record. What you got? This I've had for quite a while. I have no idea why it sat as long as it did, but I've had this for quite a while. Um, it sold for the price you see there, $104 on Etsy. I've had this for, I can't tell you how long, but well over a year or two. Um, I paid at best $5 for this. I don't think it came from a from the bins. I do think I actually bought this at a thrift store. Um, or, or an estate sale or something like that. But it was before I was bins shopping on the regular. Um, but yeah, I mean, it sold for $104. So can't believe you found the track jacket of my favorite song. <laughs> Genuine pony. <laughs> <laughs> Katie loves that song. That's so ridiculous. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think pony is a brand that's necessarily going to be, um, a high money maker, but when you find the vintage eighties, early nineties track suits and things like that, I don't think the brand matters quite as much as the fit look. Yeah. Uh, Liz, I have not sold my Eddie and the cruisers t-shirt yet. Not yet. All right. Next up, I got a twofer. Um, okay. So you know how I had all those BMX t-shirts guys. Well, I sold two of them to the same buyer for the prices you see here, 69.99 and 97.99. I sold them to California and they went to, I think it's pronounced Mage Design. So, and they went specifically to Jerome, I'm just going to say Jerome Mage because he's a designer. And if you look, if you do a little Googling, he is a designer and that's like his design company. And he's been around for well over 10 years, 10, like 20 years maybe. And he has a lot of work with like, um, Quicksilver, North Face, uh, I don't know, you'd have to go look him up, like all the different companies that he's worked for. But I was really excited to see that he bought these because it's just like, it's really cool. It's going to a design house. Maybe it's, I mean, who knows, maybe it's for him, but I think more likely, you know, with a lot of retro designs coming out, um, he's probably Inspo. working on He's probably working on doing some cool retro stuff for whatever company he's doing a project for. And uh, I just thought that was really exciting. And, and the thing is, it's this and selling to like production companies are like some of our favorite sales, both Vicky oh, they and never myself, come back. because it's never coming back. Like there's no way they're not going to say it doesn't fit. They're not going to say like, oh, I thought this was a uh, different whatever. You know, you don't I don't usually deal with a lot of returns uh, in general, but. It's like right here. I do. I get a lot of returns, but I don't get, I've never yeah. knock on something particle board. I have never had a return from either a freight forwarder. Love those. 
or a proper design house. Yeah. So it's like I made $170 and I it's it's like a done deal. Like I don't have to worry about it's a sale that's stuck. Yep. I don't have to worry about them having any issues with it. Um, because really in all likelihood, this is gonna be for some sort of inspiration for a new design or something like that. But it's just really cool. And yeah, it, it's it, fun. It's just, yeah, it's like interesting. It's like, oh, I, I saved this shirt from who knows what, where it would have ended up. And now it's going to go maybe have a new life being the inspiration for something completely different. So just very, very cool. Made me happy selling off these BMX shirts. All right. Uh, as I was saying, ski jackets, ski jackets are selling everywhere. This is a ski suit. Uh, this I actually picked up at... Was it the Silverton um, swap meet earlier this year we went to? We met Mikey. I don't remember. Um, Silverton swap meet earlier this year. I paid $10 for it at the swap meet. Um, and I knew it would sell. Like everything else, I don't mind having long tail stuff. So this mm -hmm. was sometime in April, I believe. I picked this up for $10. It's been listed ever since. And uh, it sold for $130. Well, and I feel like when you're at something like a swap meet, like this is one of those items that's big and bulky. Like nobody wants to be like dragging this around. So they're probably going to be happy. Nobody except a reseller is buying this at a swap meet. But they're they're going to be happy to get it off their hands because, I mean, listing something like this is kind of a pain in the ass, like being able to like actually get good pictures of it. And so, but look, Crystal got Yeah, no, it looks great. I'm just saying this is one of those things that ends up in somebody's death pile. They don't get around to listing it. So when you do take care of business, you can make some real money. Mm -hmm. So very, very cool. All right, next up, I've got this Field of Dreams t-shirt. I've had this forever, I feel like. But I sold it, guys, for $84.99, and it went to Australia. So they paid, like, 25 shipping. So And it was, like, under 8 ounces. So using um, the pirate ship uh, what's it, simple export rate with insurance, with, like, $100 insurance, it cost me, like, $13, $14 to ship it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, another $10. So I basically sold it for like $95. Guys, you gotta love it. Gotta love it. But yeah, this, this shirt went, is on its way right now. I like now that one. That's one of my Australia. favorite movies. Yeah. Next up for you. This was a good sale. In spite of these photos, which I have to say are not the best photos, it's really hard to photograph something black on black. But if you scroll through just to get some of these details, I actually bought this. So you can see it a little bit there. This is very 90s Madonna wearing this under a suit with the top out. Um, I paid $40 for this. I bought this about a year ago in California. Mm -hmm. Um, and I bought it at a thrift store and they had a $40 price tag on it, but it was Dolce & Gabbana. So I knew it would sell. I did have it priced pretty high. Oh, I remember you getting this. Um, I did have it priced pretty high. There's nothing wrong with it though. It does, the elastic's in perfect condition. I mean, how often could it have been possibly worn really? Right. Uh, but it's exquisitely and beautifully made. Unfortunately, I probably should have had a live model to uh, display how good nice it is. And I probably could have gotten at least five or 600 for it, mm -hmm. which is where I had it priced. But I had so little interest in it that I was like, I'm just going to sell it. I got an offer for $2.95 the other day, and I took it. Um, $40 into $2.95 is great. I'm not going to mm -hmm. knock that. Yep. I'm Very disappointed good. it didn't sell for more, but I can see why. It's just something that's really hard to visualize unless you're, you know, zoning in on the, uh, you know, zooming in on the pictures. Yeah. I hear you. Next up, the super cute Energizer Bunny sweatshirt. I got this. I didn't pay a whole lot for it. I think I paid like maybe 20 bucks for it. Um, partially because it, it, when I looked it up, it's not like a super rare one. But I think I love the design. I think it looks really cool. Um, and I ended up getting like a really good price for it. I got $84.99 on Etsy. And but look how cute. I love its lip front and the back. Look at him. Look at this little. Look at I this have this stuffed animal tail. for for sale. Look at that little fuzzy He's tail. Cute. He's real cute. Anyway, I just thought, you know, it's one of those things where I bought it because I really wanted it. And then when I looked it up, I was like, oh, there's quite a few of these out here. And a lot of them sell for a lot less than this. So I was still able to get a really good price. And I really haven't had it listed for all that long. So no, not don't maybe get a month or two. Don't get discouraged when you see something um, is lower price than you thought you were going to be able to get out of it. Because sometimes it really doesn't matter at all. And it even has like a spot right there. So there you go. Um, I actually showed this on our channel one time when I picked it up. I think I actually wore it <laughs> because it was just this big, ridiculous, long, tool, ruffly thing. 
Um, it was one of those things I couldn't leave behind at the bins. Looks it looks like some, picture. yeah, because um, she overexposed the photo so you could see the, yeah. the ruffles. It's yeah. again, black on black. It's something yeah. very difficult to see. And I believe I put that in the description that the photos have been overexposed so you could see um, all the ruffles on it. But I see like, this is something someone's going to wear for a boudoir photo shoot, Ooh. or they're going to wear this for a, you know, a maternity photo shoot, mm -hmm. something like that. And I knew that. So this is the second time I've sold something very similar to this that really, it has no name. There's no brand. It's not vintage. Um, someone probably bought it off of Wish or something. I don't know. But um, it's really cool though. I don't know what the hell anybody would wear it for, but all of those things I just, I just said, I guess. And uh, I'm assuming as, Desmond as, Wood from Sunset Boulevard. Come on. That's true. That's true. Uh, so it sold, it sold for $70. Plus shipping, but it weighs under a pound. It's huge and 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 full of ruffles, but Super again, light. very lightweight. Very cool. All right. Last one for me is uh, this Dick Tracy t-shirt. This is another one. There's a lot of them out there. So the pricing is kind of all over the place. So actually I got a really, really good price out of this one, selling it for $90. I still have one more left, but it's such a cool t-shirt. I love the front. It's got the back. Now you shut up. Go away. Um, it's got the big back graphic, uh, spell out Dick Tracy. And it's got the little comic strips on it. You got Madonna hanging out there, Warren Beatty. Um, anyway, sold it for 90, paid 20 for it. So I, I got that really big, uh, bundle of dead stock t-shirts. So, um, I paid $20 for it and sold it for 90. I still have another one left, but I was actually really happy with this sale. All right, let's get... Out of here, here we go, and let's get into our haul. Ooh, already okay. I know it's this, time this to show, haul. This show will probably be a little bit of a shorter one. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, depending on depending on how long you're going to be showing us stuff. But bust I mean, out that knife. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the stuff I don't have in the okay in the box first. So I do have a couple of things to show. Um, this is all from Colorado. All this stuff is from Colorado. So suspend your drinking game now or no. I don't know. Get Do get 911 on speed dial. It's one of the two. Jennifer, you shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Next. All right. So I picked this up at the bins. This is a brand you want to keep an eye out for. It is an anthropology brand. It is the brand is Farm. Farm for Anthropology. That's what the tags look like. They're generally really bright and retro looking type of pieces. They're bright. They're colorful like this skirt. This is just a corduroy skirt. It's like a little corduroy mini skirt with buttons up the front. Super cute. If this were larger, I would totally wear this. This particular one is not one that sells for a ton, but I think I can still get like 50 or 60 bucks for it. I picked it up at the bins. Yeah, Farm Rio. Sorry, Liz. Farm Rio um, for Anthropology. Um, I actually found a couple of pieces. This is only one that I'm going to show. I'll show the other one another date, unless it's in this box, who knows? Um, so again, paid pennies, I'll sell it for 50 or 60. This is, um, a vintage, this is also from the bins. This is vintage. I would guess it probably 1970s based on the fabric and the way that this Jersey material feels. Um, there's no tags, but it's a men's vintage 1970s ish. Again, I'll probably list this for 40, 50 bucks. Again, everything's bins pricing. So bins pricing in Colorado is $1.69 a pound. So most 69. of this stuff nice. is under a pound. Um, oh, this is, I can't handle this. This is the cutest thing ever. So I wish that this were adult sized, but I'm getting it anyway. Um, I got oh it anyway. Goodness, so this you is guys. vintage 1980s original kids costume it's so cute for ghostbusters it's so cute i actually think it's okay that this is kid size because it's vintage and with the movie i think they're gonna do a sequel aren't they to the afterlife i don't one. really know all i know uh, is that like um, you know someone's gonna want to dress their kid as a little ghostbuster i think it's it's freaking if you fantastic. look up vintage ghostbuster costume and look at the sales prices on these it's kind of crazy um i think i can get 75 to 100 dollars for this maybe more it's really weird. It's so cute. Um, hey, Danica in the chat. Danica, $1.69. Nice. 
All right, so this is another anthropology brand. You don't see it quite as often. Again, a lot of anthropology has absolutely tanked in the resale market. I'm not going to deny that. I don't go searching for it, but when I find it in the bins, I do grab it. And this is a brand that I haven't seen in a while, but I do recognize it as being anthropology. And I did know that before I found it. But the brand is Guinevere, like Princess Guinevere. Guinevere rode in on the white horse. Um, this is just a... This is kind of a, a green and orange. It's kind of the colors are distorted by, of course, our walls, but green, orange. This feels like a mohair cardigan. It's a ruffle front. Really pretty. These photos are not doing it any justice. Um, I'm probably going to sell this for the $75 range as well. <laughs> Danica keeps giving us $1.69. Nice. Where's Allison when you need her? Seriously. <laughs> um, so yeah. So can you take that off the screen so I can? She paid good money to have her dollar sixty nine. Those are super screen. chats. Yes, there are oh. multiple super chats. You weirdo, Danica. I didn't just know hold your thing chats. up higher. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to do a show here. <laughs> That's part of the show. Um, this was actually, I don't know. I think Liz might've found this and not me. I'm not entirely sure. I think Liz found this and handed it to me. So full credit for Liz on this one. Uh, but this is a cashmere Ed Hardy sweater. It's ridiculous. So I did pay, this was not a bins find. This one was a goodwill find and I paid 10 99 um, I'm going to list this for over $100. Yes, Ed Hardy is back. Yes, Ed Hardy is popular again. Look at this. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, it's cashmere. It's V-neck. It's a good size. Uh, I just got to get this listed before winter is over. <laughs> so I will probably uh, sell this for like $100, $125. Why don't you sell it for $169? <sighs> oh diane dilk says katie i want your hat well you can get the only way to get the hat and become a member of the dirty diane's gang is you have to shave your head for our friend diane who's going through cancer right now that's mm -hmm. the only way to gain membership uh and then you get a hat sent to you from crystal so but i can see why since your name is diane that you would want to have a dirty diane's hat uh, this is a brand that I picked up. This I bought at the art store, not a bins. I bought it because it felt like really nice quality. And then I happened to look it up after I grabbed it, but it was 50% off sale day. So I paid $5 for it. And this is the brand I'm trying to find the, the tag so you can see it. Kobe Halperin. This is a dress. It's just a really basic, but pretty dress. It's very well made, uh, has some nice you know, embroidered detailing and a little flutter sleeve at the end. Um, it's a pretty dress. Got a stretch to it. This dress should sell for about $75. Uh, this one I love. Whoa, what just happened to your voice? This I paid 50% uh, off as well. This is $14.99. This one is vintage, made in the USA, 80s. Lily Rubin. But look at this. This is like dynasty. Mm -hmm. I've got some shoulder pads. I've got this surplus top. Surplice, if you want to know how to spell it. Surplice top. It's got this ruching on the side with the buttons. This is like, man, I'll tell you what. This is dynasty all over the place. Um, my question is, who shot JR? Listen, JR's not dead. Oh. Spoiler alert. Um, so I I'm going to list this for probably like the 150 range. Love me some vintage Lily Rubin. Um, great designer. Nice piece. So the sound is great today. Yeah, it's nice and clear here. Yeah, we've um, done nothing different. <laughs> nothing different. I'm telling you, it's our, it's the cable. I think it was our internet. The internet connection. Yep. Um, okay, so... Your dynasty <laughs> says I came running in from the back room and it wasn't even about me. I don't know. You could wear that dress. I mean, you could, girl. You could. Your curves in that dress would be very nice. All right. So I've got two boxes here. This one box only has 22 pounds in it. 
So I'm not sure how much is in here to show you. So I have a backup box just in case. The other box is even lighter. I was like, I think you got like one blanket in here. If this is um, full enough, then I don't need, I won't open the second box until our next show. But let's see. I am a box coming in. Yeah, only 22 pounds. Liz, we had ones that were like 30 plus. She knows. She helped. I know you had to carry them around. Sorry about it, old lady Liz. Oh, I hit the lingerie section at um, the ARC one of the days that we were there. And so here's some of the stuff that I picked up. Um, I paid $6.99 a piece for these, but I've got Ooh. some. These are like Victoria's Secret. They're like with the little tie in the back. And it's supposed to look like a little apron front if you want to do a little French maid jobby. I got to get these listed because, you know, Valentine's Day, people buy lingerie. Um, they're in beautiful condition. In fact, they don't appear to have been worn or used. Uh, probably 40, 50 bucks a piece. Again, I haven't comped any of this stuff as I'm showing it to you. Maybe they sell for $5. I don't know. This is another one. Also Victoria's Secret. Um, from the sexy little things is the tag on it. I don't know how old it is. I'll have to look those up. But. Um, I don't shop at Victoria's Secret because they don't have my size. Well, they do now, but they didn't before. Mm. Um, so this is just like a pink one. Again, it looks like a little apron in the front, and then it ties in the back. Super cute. Also $6.99. Uh, I was like, let's see. What'd she say? Danica, you're not a weirdo. I liked your $1.69 donations. We appreciate your dollar sixty nine <laughs> super chats, even though Vicky yelled oh, at you to take them off the screen. You're so silly. Rude. So rude. Um, okay, so this is one of my favorite brands of vintage lingerie to source. Unfortunately, it only had one of the pieces. So the brand is Alana Gale, A L A N A G A L E. So this is made in the USA, size medium. This is prop. This is just a little bed jacket or just a little jacket. A bed jacket. Yeah, I mean it goes over a negligee pretty much. So it's got these little sheer sleeves and lace and it's a crop and it's open front. It's very cute. Had it had the negligee to go with it, it would have been worth a lot more, but I paid $5.99. I'll probably sell this for like 45 or so. Like what the hell is a bed jacket? Uh, here's another one of those Victoria's Secret things. Oh, we could be twins. Uh, please don't do that to me ever. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Not funny. Not funny. Um, okay. Here's another one of these little bed jackets, but this is um, Jonquil. So In Bloom by Jonquil. It's J-O-N-Q-U-I-L is the brand. Made in the USA. Um, just vintage lace. This one's, again, a little bit longer, but this one goes maybe to like the hip length. $35, $45. Yes, VD core. Venereal <laughs> disease core. Um, this is that same brand, Jonquil, but it doesn't go together. This is just the nightgown. Uh, so it's got a little flutter sleeve. It is sheer. Again, this is, I paid $5.99, $45 or so. Sorry, I packed a lot of the stuff together that went together. So here is one of my favorite finds from Colorado, actually. Ooh. And this was another Liz says, here, you can have this. Thanks, Liz. I paid $10.99. This is 100% wool, hand knit in Wexford. So it's an Italian, not Italian, sorry. Italian. <laughs> Irish. Uh, beautiful Irish sweater. Love it. Big hand knit Irish sweater. It has the big buttons on it that you see. They look like they're leather wrapped buttons. They're, they're plastic, actually plastic, yeah. but they look leather wrapped. But I had one just like that that I sold. This one has. Ooh, it's belted. A belt. A belt. Ooh, a la belt. la. So I'm going to list this one closer to 200 because it's like a jacket more mm -hmm. than a sweater. You got to wear that while smoking your pipe in the den. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I agree, Gail. I think that Jonquil is a, is a designer brand. Um, it's one of the higher end vintage brands, but. I can't remember off the top of my head what the what it's a subsidiary of, but I think you might be right. All right, here's another Irish sweater. This one doesn't have a tag, 
but also vintage wool Irish cable knit sweater paid $7.99. This is going to be $85 to $100 all day long. Okay, hey, why does Irish chili only have uh, 239 beans in it? Because one more, it'd be too farty. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> Too farty. <laughs> Welcome to my <laughs> life. Okay. Uh, this is a vintage made in the USA lands and grandpa sweater. So these Henley sweaters are grandpa sweaters. They're heavyweight. They're nicely made. This was inexpensive as far as price. So I paid like, I paid $7.99. But these tend to sell on um, Etsy really well. These, these Henley grandpa sweaters. So I'll probably sell it for uh, $65, $75. Let's see. This was a $3. This is Liz Claiborne Crazy Horse. Nothing fantastic about the brand. In fact, it's a brand I would not normally pick up. I picked it up for the content of the sweater. Look at that. It's got these great little sailboats on it. Love so it's it. nautical wear, yacht rock, nautical, all of those things for keywords. Um, it's just a basic V-neck, navy blue sweater, preppy, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Preppy core. Preppy core. This box might be enough. I've got just a few more. Um, as we talked about last week, Fisherman Sweaters and Matilda Jane were my two things that I found a lot of. This is a Matilda Jane uh, dress for women for $6.99. It's just a basic purple, kind of like a login look because it has these layers at the end. What does login look mean? Login look is layered. It's basically layers is what it means. Um, something that falls and has layers it was kind of a thing that was in before cottage core, but still has some bit of a following to it. So this is linen. It's a really nice dress. Um, nice fabrics, nice purple color with some blue uh, accent, maybe 65 bucks, 65, 75, maybe. Uh, let's see. These came from the Goodwill. I was desperately trying to find the comforter that went with it, but I did not find it. I did grab the pillow shams. Um, this is vintage crow skill. So 80s crow skill pattern. I actually had this on my bed in the 80s. So it's this blue, pink, and yellow kind of like rosettes. I paid $3.99 for two. These are just pillow shams. And I will sell these as they are, probably for $40. But I did grab the set of sheets that goes with them. So the sheets are good. So I've got the flat sheet, the fitted sheet, and um, that's the pillowcases. You could get like a solid, like even a yellow uh a duvet. Yep. And and pair it with all that stuff. It would look great. So I paid $6.99 for the set of sheets. I think they're queen size. I haven't checked yet. But the, the sheets themselves should sell for about a hundred dollars. My dog walked out of the room at Katie's joke. Thank you, Tommy. I appreciate that. Because the dog said to itself, you can't get any better than that. I'm leaving Ugh. before it all goes downhill. This is another uh Liz took pity upon me and handed it to me. But this is a vintage, I paid $1.99, vintage, the date is right on it, 1998, Dale of Norway, ski cap. Toque. Toque. A ski toque. Um, has the tag on it. I will probably sell this for 60 bucks, 50, 60 bucks. Nice. I've just, just a few more here. Just talking about ski wear earlier. These are vintage 1970s ski pants made by White Stag. Now, White Stag, before it became a cheap Walmart brand, was a ski company that made high-end ski wear, actually. 
before they sold out to Walmart and then they started making everything. They're kind of like faded glory before faded glory. But these are high end, very nicely made wool blend boot cut um, ski pants. Nice. They're thick. They have stretch to them. They're in great condition. Um, I'll probably sell these for about 125 bucks. Yeah. Greg, shed it, you hoser. Take off, eh? Uh, let's see. I got a few more in here. Oh, wait. I have another. Is that a belt too? Fisherman sweater. It does have a belt. With a belt. It's not quite as fancy as that first one, but also very nice. Uh, paid $9.99. The brand is on this one. Handloomed or Aran or A-R-A-N. Gail Tara. G-A-E-L-T-A-R-R-A -R -R -A is the brand. 100% pure wool. Nice cardigan sweater. Um, I'll probably list that one for about 125 Something like that. Would you put original white stag in the title or people just know? Uh, you know, I think some people just know. I would put white stag in the title. I wouldn't advertise it when it's a Kmart, you know, Walmart brand. But in this case, I would put it because I'm going to put vintage 70s, white stag, ski pants, black. Yeah. Then the size. Um, wool blend, whatever fits in the title. So I would in this case. All right. Let's see. This is some kind of vintage, kind of prairie core, kind of westerny. I paid like four fifty for this. I think Liz might have found this one too. It's almost like a square dance type of dress. Let me try to button it a second so you can get a better. Kristen idea. wants to know if you've sold anything from this haul yet. You haven't nothing yet much. because I don't. I don't have anything listed yet. Not a single thing listed yet. No. Uh, last week was the first week. Crystal picked up the stuff. Um, and none of it is listed yet. So I haven't yeah. sold anything yet. Slacker. Sorry. She's uh, usually like two to three weeks behind on, on what I've, what I'm giving her as far as things being sold. So, um, anyway, so this is like, kind of like a Western, it's got a little flutter sleeve with a, a lace yoke, but then it has kind of like a ditzy flower print at buttons down the front, which is cute. Um, and this should sell for, I mean, maybe like 50 ish, not going to break any, you know, records or anything, but about 50 ish. This one, I can't tell what the brand name is. I don't think it really matters, but this is some vintage, uh, eighties, like super bright, Hawaiian type of pattern, but more, not quite a muumuu dress, but it is a maxi dress. So 50-ish, 60-ish. I couldn't turn it down. It's kind of ugly. I paid $5. And then let's see. I've got... This is the last thing from there. So this is vintage made in the USA, Scott McClintock, not Jessica, but Scott. So this is 80s. This is kind of a, this is velvet, just a long velvet coat. So it really doesn't matter who makes it or where it's from. This is always going to fit um, Gothic, Wiccan, Renaissance, Dark Academia, all of the cores, it's just a long velvet kind of, they call it like a duster or an opera coat. Hmm. Matter of fact, I actually wore um, one just like this that was vintage for our wedding. I wore it over my dress. Um, I can't believe you didn't bring your your rugs and your uh, and your. Do drinks. you think I'm going to give them the ideas? I'm going to keep some shit close to the vest okay. sometimes. And that is it. That's like all I have... Uh, that's all I got left. There you go. Look at that. It's only 10. Pagan, it's not wicked. It's not yeah. even 10 after 3. I know, right? Because I don't have anything to show you guys. I don't got nothing. Lori says, I would have worn that back in the 80s with my big hair. You know what, Lori? I would have too. Is the Christmas tree still there? That's the real question. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. I can't tell because your picture's terrible. Hold on. You shut your mouth. 
it's still there right behind the car. It is. It is. I'm looking at, you know, my, my reflection here in this video. I'm wondering how quick, can I go get some fillers before we go and no, no, you cannot go on our cruise. Cause we're going to, we're going to get fillers. It's going to be breakfast buffet. It's going to be, that's going to fill. That's going to yeah, fill gonna be the fillers. Cause I'm, I'm losing buffet, weight. So dinner, as, buffet. as some women in this chat may understand the older you get, the thinner your face starts to fall. And the good thing about being chubby is that I keep my face pretty full, but you know, as I'm starting to lose weight again, but well, we're going to put that on hold because then we're going to go to New Orleans and we're going to have ourselves some beignets mm -hmm. and it's going to be. Oh. Let's see. Oh, All Tommy asked, is that a Jody dress? No, that's not a Jody dress. Jody has better taste than that. Jody wears fun and funky. That's just gaudy vintage. Don't get me wrong. There's a buyer for it, but that's not, Jody has a better fashion sense. <laughs> so rude. Tommy, so rude. you don't, you, you don't see my face up close, but yes, I do need some filler. I need, I have never had it before. I'm just kidding. I've, I have had Botox, but she's not kidding. She wants it, but I do. Um, I'm just afraid. I'm afraid to look like Priscilla Presley. And I'd really just want to fill in these lines. Anyway, guys. Yes. Yeah, so a little bit of a shorter show today. And like we said, we will, not be here for next week's show because mm -hmm. next week what will we be on actually on the ship by then um yep. i think so yep we no, will be we get on yeah on sunday so we get on the ship on the fifth and then mm -hmm. we're going to be traveling home on the 12th so for at least the next two sundays we will not have a show we will not be around so and hopefully we will not be active in on any social media for the most part other than nope. maybe posting some cute pictures of ourselves on the boat Sorry, you're going to have to, re you know, rely on Liz and Barb and Teresa and uh, Laura when she pops into the, the group. Um, I'll be posting food pictures probably. You, only on your personal page. I doubt you'll post them in the Facebook group. No, not in the Facebook group, <laughs> but on my personal page. Yeah, I guess that's true. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. And we will see, hopefully we'll be a little bit tan. Maybe we'll have a little bit of a tan. Oh, I better on. get a tan. Yeah. For sure. We'll see how tanned up we can get. Yeah. See, Danica says I should use silicone caulk from Home Depot. <laughs> Come on out, Danny. <laughs> I, I want you to do it for me. She well, did she tell me. Your, she could do your Botox. She can. She did tell me she was going to teach me how to do the Botox. I'm a little bit afraid. Like do it to her. To your she top. does her own. Yeah. Girl, I'm, I'm a little bit frightened. That. How about we just fly you out? I mean, really, for what you pay to go do Botox, you could just fly Danica out to stay with us. Oh, I paid. Yes. And, and she could do both of us. Cause I mean, I might as well start, uh, and it, it will save you money and we get to mm -hmm. hang out with Danica. All right, Danica, you heard it here. We're going to fly you out to do Botox I mean, seriously. instead of me spending $500 every three and a half months. I'm going to fly you out every three and a half months for less. There you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See, she flies for free. So do I. I have the miles. I was going to pay for your. I was going to use miles, not not actually pay for you. But anyway, you can come we'll, stay we'll with buy, us. We'll buy you food. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much, and we will see you in a few weeks. And we'll be super, super, super tan. Very. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be like George Hamilton tan. Really? You're gonna be orange. <laughs> that I lovely shade of orange. <laughs> orange. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.